everyone knows that the Flutter community is incredible and always shows up. When I say show up, I mean over 122,000 of you watch this year's What's New in Flutter keynote at Google I.O. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I'd be at Google I.O., let alone presenting a demo that I built in 30 minutes. In this video, I'll show you how I built that plant identifier app in about 30 minutes, sorta. Let's get started. The story starts a few weeks before Google I.O. I was testing out Firebase AI Logic's new live API feature that was going to be announced in preview. In fact, here's the first ever prototype that I built and recorded to show some of my teammates. All right, what do you see? I see a laptop on a wooden table in what looks like a conference room. The UI is awful. The camera preview isn't centered. It had a placeholder app title and logo. My favorite is actually the waveform thingy goes here placeholder. But you know what? It worked. Here's how that prototype came together. My goal was to build an app that's driven by a Gemini model with support for human-like real-time voice conversation, otherwise known as the Gemini Live API. In order to build that experience, there were four key components that need to exist. Recording the user's voice, playing back Gemini's audio responses, recording a live video stream, and finally, last but not least, access to Gemini and the Live API. Of course, where else would I find building blocks for all these features other than, you know it, pub.dev. First, I wanted to record a stream of audio from the microphone, which it turned out is very well supported by the record package. Gemini's Live API has specific audio formats that are supported, so I had to make sure that my app's audio configuration matched up. So here's a code snippet for recording audio. I'm making sure to match Gemini's input audio format by recording 16-bit PCM audio at a 16K sample rate. I also enabled echo cancellation and noise suppression to try and get the best audio possible. Next, I wanted to play back Gemini's audio responses. Flutter So Loud, a high-performance audio playback plugin, is commonly used in games due to its low latency capabilities, making it the perfect candidate for my app, which required support for real-time voice conversation. The code looks pretty similar to before, but instead of recording, we're now playing back audio data. The audio playback stream is configured to match the Live API's output audio format, 16-bit PCM audio at a 24K sample rate. I also set the buffer stream to release, which means that so loud can toss the data once it's been played back. As the app receives audio chunks from Gemini, we can add them to the audio stream to be played back. As someone who's not super experienced with building audio intensive apps, I found that both of these plugins are pretty awesome to work with. I didn't need to learn anything about the native audio APIs. It was an overall fantastic experience for me. One thing that I learned pretty quickly though, is that sample rate is pretty important. It should exactly match with the audio chunk's original sample rate. Otherwise, you will end up with super high-pitched, fast-sounding audio, or super low-pitched and slow-sounding audio. Just ask me how I know. In totally unrelated news, I now know what I'd sound like if I were to become a talking chipmunk. Anyway, hopping on over to recording a live video stream, I used the camera plugin. In configuring the camera, I set the resolution to very high, but you could definitely get away with a lower resolution depending on how much detail you need in the final image. Then I set up a timer to take a photo every one second and add it to a stream of images. Finally, I needed access to the Gemini Live API. So of course, I wired up the Firebase AI package. Remember the diagram that we saw earlier illustrating the app architecture? This one? Firebase AI Logic provides the middle layer that gives Flutter apps direct access to the Gemini API. For your provider, you can choose between the Gemini Developer API or Vertex API. The Gemini Developer API gives you the option to get started at no cost. So I usually recommend going with that one. If you've used Firebase AI Logic before, this code will look really familiar. This Google AI bit specifies that we want to use the Gemini Developer API. Then we can construct a live generative model with the model name. I set the response modality to audio and configured the response voice. Once the model's been set up, you're good to kick off a new live API session. The live API session enables your app to send and receive streams of data to and from Gemini. Notice how sending data chunks to Gemini looks the same, whether it's an image or audio. Just package up the data chunks as inline data parts and remember to specify the MIME type. Meanwhile, we're continuously listening for Gemini's responses. 
parsing out the data parts with an audio mime type, and adding them to the so loud audio stream to get played back. And finally, once we're done talking it up with Gemini, we have to remember to close the live session. Keep in mind, all four of these packages and plugins supported my target platforms, iOS, Android, and web. So all I had to really do to get the app running on all three platforms by default was configuring the build files with the correct annotations. Okay, so back to the story for a moment. So my prototype made its way to Craig, who was putting together the What's New in Flutter IO keynote. He asked me, how crazy would it be to try to demo this on stage? The problem was my prototype was too generic and we generally want keynote demos to be tied to a good use case. Something a little more impressive. Not to mention the UI still looks like this. So I have to take some time to polish it. Plus, Craig being as gracious as he always is insisted that I should be the one who gets to present the demo since I was the one who was building it. But there's another tiny problem. I was getting on an airplane to fly 2,000 miles away from Google HQ to visit my partner's family. <sighs> okay, I came up with a plan. I'll just spend some time polishing the app UI, and then once I touch down at my partner's parents' house, I'll find a use case, implement it, and record the demo. The day after my flight, I sat down at the dining table at 9 a.m. to brainstorm demo ideas. The clock was ticking. I start looking around the house. I can ask Gemini to identify a bunch of different objects that I have in my backpack. My headphones, laptop, phone, water bottle, kind of like my original demo. Meh, that's too vague. It's not super exciting either. But wait a second. My partner's mom is a plant whisperer. She has a ton of plants and they're all beautiful. Meanwhile, I know absolutely nothing about plants. And if you don't believe me, I've managed to overwater and kill a succulent before. Just mention that to any plant lover in your life, their jaws will drop and their heads will explode. Anyway, this sounded like a fantastic use case, so I began to build out a system prompt. You're a plant identifier. Your job is to help the user identify plants and flowers. When the user asks you to identify a plant or flower, respond by telling them what it is. Greet the user by telling them that you are a plant identifier. If you're unable to identify the plant or flower, you may ask the user for more information about it or ask for a closer look. Ask the user to turn on their camera and show you a plant, and you can help them identify plants and flowers. When identifying a plant, include a fun fact about it. And that did it. There were many keystrokes and much backspacing, but ultimately, after about 30 minutes of iteration, I settled on a prompt that did a good job at identifying plants and providing the user experience that I wanted. Technically, I didn't even write any code. I just updated the prompt, and it resulted in an entirely new user experience. Now, obviously, the demo was built on top of my working prototype, including the scaffolding for the UI, audio, video, and Firebase AI logic, which definitely took more than 30 minutes to set up. However, since I already had the prototype, all I had to do was update the system prompt to implement new business logic for the demo. No coding required. You can clone my code right now and spend 30 minutes updating the prompt. You'd get an entirely different app with a different feature set and user experience too. In my case, the original demo depended on the user prompting Gemini by verbally asking questions. Whereas with the plant identifier demo, Gemini guides the user through the process of identifying plants by providing instructions and responding in the way that I instructed it to, by identifying the plant and including a fun fact. All right, what do you see? I see a laptop on a wooden table in what looks like a conference room. Hey, Gemini? Hello, I am a plant identifier. Would you like to turn on your camera and show me a plant so I can help identify it for you? Sure thing. All right, I'm gonna walk over to this plant over here. Can you tell me what this plant is? Okay. That looks like a Boston fern. A fun fact about the Boston fern is that it's one of the oldest known houseplants. Not to mention the added bonus of having the app run by default on iOS, Android, and web, without any extra effort, just because it was built with Flutter. Of course, I showed the app to my partner's mom and grandma to make sure that the Gemini model was properly identifying the plants. They were so impressed with the app that they asked me if they could download it from the app store. At that point, I knew that I had a solid demo on my hands. I ended up recording the demo for web and Android. Then I sent it over to Craig so that I could get slotted into the keynote. 
You know, now that I think about it, even though the recording was one continuous take, I still spent more time combining it with all of the screencasts and syncing the audio tracks than I did editing the prompt for the plant identifier. In case it's not already abundantly clear, I've been having so much fun building with Firebase AI Logic and Flutter. So much so that I just came up with this little game in about five minutes for demonstration purposes in this video. Give me your first clue. All right. I spy with my little eye something blue. Hmm, something blue. Let's see. I spy with my little eye a blue vase with a yellow label. Is that a um, yes, actually, that blue vase right there, right? Yes, that's what I'm looking at. Am I right? All right, yes, that's correct. And all it took was another prompt. If you want to test out Gemini features in a Flutter app, like real-time bi-directional streaming with Live API or image editing with Nano Banana, we just launched the Flutter AI Playground app where you can test out those features and a few others right in your browser. It was built to be an app for developers like you to try out the different features and APIs that are available to Flutter apps using Firebase AI Logic. Yours truly worked on it, so please leave any feedback you have in the comments below, good, bad, or otherwise, I want to hear all of it. There's a link in the description where you can spin up and deploy the Flutter AI Playground app to Firebase hosting in about two clicks, assuming you're already logged into Firebase. If you want to check out the source code for building with the Gemini Live API, as always, it's available in the Flutter demos repo. I actually cleaned up my plant identifier demo code and repurposed it for the Playground app's Live API demo. If you have any questions about building with Flutter and Firebase AI logic, please leave a comment and I'll try to answer it. Before I go, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to everyone who reached out about the plant identifier demo. So many of you asked about it that I figured, hey, this would be a fun story to tell. Y'all were truly the inspiration behind this video. Finally, thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look, learned something new, and just maybe felt inspired to start a new project. Keep on building awesome stuff, and I'll see you next time. Bye.